What is up, MFers? Welcome back to another exciting video. I got a video today for you guys that you've been requesting since pretty much the start of my channel over a year ago, and that is doing a full rod and reel arsenal. As you can see, got them lined up all pretty right behind me. But the reason I waited so long to do this was, to be honest, I wasn't really happy with my entire rod and reel arsenal. I had so many different rods that I just kind of had as fillers that were just kind of getting me by. And now I'm getting to the point where I'm extremely happy with the large majority of my rods. Reels, we'll kind of get there in a little bit. I'll talk to you guys what I'm doing with my reel situation moving forward. Or at least I'll try to explain to you guys what I'm doing with my reels. Anyways, I feel like every channel has done a video like this where they talk about their rod and reel arsenal. Some channels do it every single year. I'm not going to be doing it every single year, but as with everything, I'm gonna to try to make this educational. I'm gonna to try to teach you guys exactly why I use which rod for which technique. I'm also not going to go through, uh, I think I counted like 35 rods here. I don't carry 35 rods in my boat. I have very niche specific rods. I have some old rods here. I no longer use that I need to go ahead and sell. Uh, and so I'm gonna take 10 or 12 of these rods that I have in my boat that I use on a daily basis now that I've been extremely happy with and I know help you catch more fish. So without further ado, I'm gonna get out of this 40 degree garage, go into my nice, warm, Huskerlicious basement and show you guys the rods and reels I'm going to be using in 2018 and moving forward uh, and why I like each for specific techniques. Let's go. Okay, MFers, it's time to get started with the rod and reel arsenal. I'm very, very excited for this video because I get to show off a bunch of new rods that I have been using and freaking loving the last few weeks, a uh, few months, and some rods that I've loved forever, some rods that I think you should go pick up and they're gonna help you catch more fish. But before we talk about rods, let's go over this little real conundrum that I'm faced with right now and I'm trying to figure out. So while I'm extremely happy with my rod situation, my reel situation is not quite where I want it to be right now. The reels I was previously using that I get questions asked all the time, they were cheaper reels, they were made cheap, and the reason I wanted to pick a bunch up to promote them and show them off to you guys and try them out was because they were very cheap, they had a lot of really, really good features, and I wanted to promote a product to you guys that I felt was a very good product that anyone could go out and buy. I just feel like in the bass fishing industry especially, there's an elitist mind frame when coming out with stuff like boats where we're coming out with an $80,000, $100,000 boat that I guarantee did not cost more than $20,000 to make. In my opinion, there is zero reason why companies should be making $30 and $40 reels and selling them for $250. That's my opinion. But as I reviewed those previous reels, I let you guys know multiple times these may not have the type of components, the quality of components that are going to hold up over time. And just like you guys would expect, I fish five, six, seven days a week a lot of times. To be honest, I don't take care of my stuff very well, and the large majority of those reels did not hold up. They, uh, the gears went out on a lot of them, a lot of parts broke on a lot of them, but that's not to be said they aren't a good deal for people that go out and fish maybe once a week, once a month, every couple weeks, they're not super serious about it. In my opinion, they're great starting bait casting reels. They make some good products for people to go out and they can buy them, learn to use a bait caster, uh, and hopefully the majority will hold up over time. Now, some of mine have held up and those are the ones I'm still using to this day, but a lot of them didn't. And so that's not a product that I wanna promote to you guys. Now let's keep it 100 real quick here. Uh, I'll let you guys know, there are quite a few guys in the YouTube fishing industry that are going around and they're just looking for whatever company is going to pay them the most money. And that's the rod, reel, line, clothing, whatever company that they're going to work with moving forward. And to be completely honest, I've been offered some very solid amounts of money to promote reels, rods, line, baits, whatever to you guys that I have turned down because to be honest, I'm not gonna promote bullshit to you guys. It means too much to me and I appreciate you guys, every single one of you so much for watching my videos to the point where I'm not going to mislead you uh, or push something down your throat that I don't believe in 100%. So that's the direction I've gone with a lot of my tackle. And that's all I have to say about that. So let's get into the rod and reel arsenal. Woo, that got a little bit long and windy. I probably got a bunch of hate comments and thumbs downs for me being 100% honest with you guys, but that's all I'm ever gonna be. So anyways, 
Let's start with the rod and reel combinations. The first rod and reel we're gonna talk about, we're gonna talk about the Lux series of rods a lot, this new Lux series from Six Sense Rods, because it's what I'm pretty much moving towards in the majority of my rods, because I am so freaking happy that the craftsmanship, the quality, the refinement of the Six Sense lures has now translated over into their rods. Now, as with all these Six Sense Lux rods, go use the promo code MF10. That's our personal promo code, us MFers get to use no one else gets to use that and it saves you money and it lets you get these rods cheaper than anywhere else and unfortunately i'm going to tell you this i'm not sure if i'm supposed to or not there's not a whole lot of these six cents lux rods left they are selling out very very quick once they're gone they're probably not going to be available for like three four five months because there's only a limited quantity so go pick one of these up very very soon if you want to get in on these awesome new rods one concept you're going to hear a whole lot here is versatility to me versatility is absolutely key i have like 35 rods and i have about 10 different reels you don't need a million different reels you need a seven speed reel you need a six speed reel you can bop it up to a burner speed reel and you're going to use braid and fluorocarbon i use very very little if any monofilament I don't need 78 different types of reels for those applications. I need about four or five. Rods, on the other hand, rods are a different story. I can't go take a 7.6 uh, heavy flipping stick and go throw a deep crankbait on it or go punch mats with it and, and two ounce weights or throw a big swim bait with it. You need specific rods for some different technique. And that's something that makes these rods so awesome because they're so freaking versatile. Anyways, let's let's talk about the rod. 7.3 Heavy Lux Rod. This is the one I threw my spinnerbait on the other day. Got it paired up with a 7 to 1 gear ratio quantum accuracy reel. 17 pound fluorocarbon, big spinnerbait. Honestly, I'd be totally cool with throwing big jigs with this, light finesse jigs, uh, throwing top water with braid on this. This rod's gonna be able to do a whole lot of things. It's a little bit faster than some of the moderate fast actions uh, in this series of rods, so I'm not gonna throw a lot of moving baits with it. Next rod up in the arsenal is the 7.4 medium heavy moderate action. This one's called the Movement Square Bill Special. So you see I got this big giant jerk bait tied up on it a six three to one gear ratio reel 15 pound line so this one is most definitely it's a seven four rod it has a nice parabolic action it's got power all the way through the tip but it's parabolic enough that i'll throw treble hook baits on it that's what i got tied up here this one's gonna do a lot of things for me i've already thrown a chatter bait on it this is my go-to chatter bait rod now it's soft enough that they can engulf the bait it's got enough power that you can throw a bait like this a one ounce bait with it Gonna be great for square bills and since it is a longer rod uh, something i want to stress with that it's not going to be one of my rods where i'm trying to make accurate um, short pitches presentations like that um, this is going to be one where i'm making long bomb casts like with the jerk bait square bill uh, just trying to cover water with that longer rod making long long casts next rod up is the 611 medium heavy moderate fast action rod with a 6 3 to 1 gear ratio reel 12 pound test fluorocarbon as you can see has a jerk bait tied up this dude's been awesome for a jerk bait but at the same time it's got enough power i'm gonna feel very very comfortable doing exactly what i just said that last rod won't do quite as well and that's making shorter more accurate presentations throwing a little square bill at stumps docks stuff like that you've seen me bank fish with lipless crankbaits with this you're about to watch a video tomorrow where i catch about 30 fish including some big ones on this jerk bait i think i lost zero fish in that video on this rod awesome jerk bait rod lipless rod this guy does a whole lot of different stuff okay next rod up is uh, pretty much in the middle of the last two i talked about this is the 72 medium heavy moderate fast um, another crankbait rod from Six Sense Lures, the Lux. If I was going to buy one in the entire lineup to throw crankbaits on that's the most versatile, I would be throwing this one. This one has a lipless crankbait tied up to it. In my opinion, it is the best lipless crankbait rod I've ever thrown. And the reason for that is it's light. It's easy to keep up in your hand and have that trap ripping out of the grass the entire way back. It's soft enough that when a fish picks up on the bait, it can engulf this bait. A lot of times they just slap at lipless crankbaits. This guy's going to keep them pinned. But at the same time, it has enough stiffness to the tip of this rod that you can rip it out of that cover. Absolutely key when throwing the lipless crankbait. But you could throw square bills on it. You could throw topwater walking baits on it with braid you could do a lot of different things with moving baits treble hook baits with this rod okay no more of the foo foo treble hook crankbait style rods let's get into some damn meat hammers this one right here is one i talked to you guys about i was it's a 75 extra heavy lux rod i told you guys when i was sitting right over there testing the, the different flex in this rod and showing how much power it had that it was going to be an awesome frog rod while well, i took it down to texas turns out it is a money frog Rod. So I got this guy split up with a Cast King Speed Demon. This one's held up very well for me. 9-3 to 1 gear ratio, 65 pound braid, 
of course a froggy on there now like i said great great frog rod with all the power all the way through the tip does not have that super light flimsy tip on it you're gonna get a good hook in them on that first stick and i'm definitely gonna go buy another one of these and use it for my dock flipping my heavy bush flipping stuff like that 20 25 pound fluorocarbon for that it's gonna be absolutely money this guy has a ton of power the most powerful rod in the Lux lineup by far. All right, next rod up. I said I had only meat sticks left over. Well, this one's not. This one's Mr. Versatility. This is the 7-1 medium heavy. This is a fast action. So a little bit faster action. Uh, I got it split up with a seven to one gear ratio reel, 12 pound fluorocarbon line. And honestly, like I said, this is Mr. Versatility. This is probably the most versatile rod in the Six Sense Lux lineup um, for, for single hook baits, not treble hook baits. This is the rod I'm gonna throw Texas rigs on. I could bump it up and throw a half ounce jig on it. I could throw a flick shake on it, um, weightless Cinco, just about anything you wanna do. It has enough power that I could feel comfortable throwing a half or three quarter ounce jig on it, but it has no problem at the same time throwing a weightless bait just as well. 7-1 medium heavy rod from the Lux. Love this one. Next rod up is a 7-6 heavy Lux rod. So this rod, once again, can handle a lot of heavier applications. I got a big three quarter or one ounce swing head tied up on this. I flip docks with this, 20 pound fluorocarbon line, seven to one gear ratio reel. This guy is a meat stick, anything a half ounce and probably up to an ounce, ounce and a quarter. This guy can handle every application and more for that technique. Okay, this rod is a, it's a really, really cool rod. This is a seven five heavy moderate fast action so it's got a slower taper so once again we got a rod that's super super versatile i got this swim bait the six inch swim bait tied up to it which i feel like that can do that just fine it's soft enough that i feel like i can throw a lot of my like three quarter to two ounce treble hook swim baits on it but it has enough tip at the same time that i can drag a jig with and i feel completely fine got it split up seven to one gear ratio real 17 pound fluorocarbon line this is the one i caught those giant wipers on swim baits on Handles those great, loads up really, really well. It's a little bit softer action rod than that 7.6 heavy fast action Lux rod. This guy is great for a ton of different techniques. Okay, next rod up is one I've had for a very, very long time and I love it for some different applications. Uh, this is the 7.3 Heavy Abu Garcia Vendetta rod. It's only a $90 rod, got it spooled up with a seven to one gear ratio reel and 50 pound braid. This guy right here is my buzz bait and topwater walking bait rod braided line i'll throw a popper on it too in some heavier situations with heavier hooks like that pop rp70 i like to throw but this guy has a really nice softer tip and a lot of backbone so i can walk baits that's a really really good response walking top water baits and same with a buzz bait when they come up and just swipe at a buzz bait that softer tip gets them almost every time really really good rod i've caught a ton of fish on over the years okay next rod up is one of my favorites of all time I have five or six rods we're gonna get into in just a second that I feel like are straight up niche rods that I, I like, uh, but are very technique specific. This guy is my last rod that's not, and I throw a ton of different baits with it, and it's very versatile. This is the Phoenix Recon 7'6 Heavy, and, and I got it spooled up right now with 65 pound braid, 7'1 gear, 7 1 to 1 gear ratio reel and as you can see a weedless 6 inch swim bait so this rod to me is a moderate fast action i'd call it like an extra heavy stick and it's perfect for several different baits for me this one right here a 6 inch weedless swim bait any of my weedless swim bait fishing with braided line this guy's money it loads up really nice and it has a ton of power um umbrella rigs you guys see me throw alabama rigs on this guy uh, it's just, it's absolutely perfect. A 7.9 rod, so you can really launch it out there. It's got enough power that you can drive a hook home, um, but it's light and sensitive enough that you can feel the bites when you need to. This guy is one of my favorites of all time. I also love to throw the MS Slam Rod. This is my big topwater treble hook type rod. I always keep braids spooled up on them. If I need to, I'll throw a fluorocarbon leader but this guy is the deal. Okay, like I just told you guys, it's time to get into some niche rods and spinning rods, which to me are basically niche rods because I barely ever throw a spinning rod. The first one we're gonna talk about is the most fun, exciting one, my big Magnum swim bait rod. And this is not enough rod for some bigger baits I wanna start throwing, but this is the Dobbins Fury 806 swim bait rod. So it's an eight foot long, 
six power swim bait rod. Uh, it's really, really good for treble hook baits. It has more of a nice parabolic action than it does like a faster jig hook style action, which is excellent for these big treble hook style baits. Not so good for big jig hook baits like a Huddleston or a Batesmith Magnum or something like that. And it even is a little bit tough to throw that Hinkle Shad and the, the slide swimmer on it, the big slide swimmer that is. Uh, but I, I get by with it anyways. I have it split up with the seven one to one gear ratio reel. 80 pound braided line. Um, this is the Abu Garcia Aura Inshore. They don't even make this reel anymore. But to me, this is just an awesome budget swim bait combo. This is like a $100 rod with, I think it was about a $100 reel. This reel holds a lot of line. It's got better gears in it than the regular Aura reels. And it's been really, really good to me. More of a parabolic action, again, for those treble hook baits. Definitely a good rod that can handle baits up to five or six ounces. Okay, the next rod that's a niche rod, this is the Dobbins Fury 805 Flip Punch. So this is my punching rod. That's why it doesn't have a reel on it right now, because you can't punch a whole lot of mats when the water's 42 degrees in Nebraska. But when those mats start forming, you need a rod, an eight foot rod. I love an eight foot rod for that technique with a ton of power and the right flex. Uh, it's kind of like a moderate fast action. Yeah, I'd say it's like a moderate fast action rod, but I've caught a ton of good fish on this. It has enough power to get them up out of that mat. It's not a total broomstick, so you're not gonna blow a big hole in their mouth and have them tear the, the hook out while they're coming up through the mat. This guy is a really, really good rod. But again, I don't really need it right now because it's terrible outside, it's cold. Summertime though, this guy will get used. Okay, my last niche style rod we're gonna talk about. This is the Six Sense Lux. This is a 7-Eleven medium, heavy, moderate action crankbait rod. So, as you can see again, no reel spooled up on this guy for the next few trips anyways. This is my deep crankbait rod. I've used it a few times already. Haven't caught a ton of fish on it yet, but I freaking love its ability. I can throw anything from that Cloud9 C10. Um, I've thrown the 20 foot diver on it and everything in between. Baits from three quarter ounce to two ounces. This guy is going to be the deal but it's not really gonna to be too great for any other techniques um, involving a jig hook or anything or a shallow running crankbait. You don't need an eight foot rod or a 7-Eleven rod for a shallow running crankbait. So for that reason, it's probably gonna be the post spawn before this guy gets a reel spooled up on it. Um, but at that point, you guys know you're gonna see a whole lot of deep cranking and me catching some big old slaunchy mamas on those rock piles and stuff with those C10s. So 7-Eleven crankbait rod. Okay, last and certainly least, we are going to talk about two different spinning rods that I'm gonna have on my boat at all times and use for some other different techniques as well. First one is the 6.7 medium um, fast action uh, Cast King Perigee 2 rod. Now I don't even know if these things are available because they had them out for like a month and then they just went away. Don't ask on that. Uh, I got to split up with that uh, Quantum Throttle, that little $60 reel that I'm really, really happy with. So any type of really light technique I really like this guy for, we got him split up with 10 pound braid, six pound fluorocarbon line, so I can throw drop shots, wacky rig, stuff like that. Really light, nimble rod. Um, this is the one I do trout fishing with and streams and stuff too. Actually going out of town with Mrs. Millican Fishing, a little anniversary trip this weekend that this little trout rod is going to be getting used. You guys will see that very, very soon. And last, finally last, is a spinning rod and reel combination. I'm actually, a little bit excited about. That is this brand new Six Sense Lux. It's a 7.2 medium, and I've got this Quantum Smoke Inshore reel. This is the reel that Jordan Lee actually just won the Bassmaster Classic with. Um, pretty stoked to try this out. I haven't spooled up with line yet, but you're gonna see me use it a whole lot for my spinning rig reel type stuff. So again, with spinning reels, especially a longer one like this, drop shots, casting longer rigs like a, a, a Nico or something like that, uh, and this guy has power all the way through the tip. It's not a super fast action tip. Um, this one's a little bit more moderate, so it's gonna be really, really good at keeping those fish pinned a long distance away, and of course be very sensitive. I'm probably gonna spool it up uh, with some 10 or 15 pound braid, use 10 or eight pound fluorocarbon leader, which is pretty standard for me with spinning rod and reel combinations. So. There you have it right there. My last rod and reel combo we're gonna talk about today. All right guys, well that's it. I hope this didn't get too lengthy. I hope I could uh, tell you some rod and reel combinations that I feel are going to help you catch more fish because they've helped me catch a whole bunch of fish. Again, if you wanna go pick up any of those Lux rods, use MF10 as a promo code, save you guys some money, you can get them cheaper than anywhere else. Like I said, going out of town soon with Mrs. Melican Fishing, um, do, heading west, way, 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 way west. It's gonna be a fun, week can be a nice getaway it's terrible here in nebraska but i think finally when we get back things are going to be picking up it's going to be warming up we're going to have some nice pre-spawn into spawn fishing 
super jacked for that. I have a nice little tur planned for you guys as well that you've seen no one do before. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I will catch you very, very soon. I'm out of here. Peace. I'm not sorry. I can't help this love like mine. <laughs> I'm not sorry. I can't stop with a love like mine.